Now who will sign that FIR? Because the informant herself is dead. So in such cases, it is the policeman who received that phone call signs it. He becomes that PSI becomes the first informant. He replaces the first informant because the informant is dead. Sometimes reverse to it, the accused himself is informant. Accused nahi aake bol diya sab, main nahi kar diya ye sab kaand. Main hi aapko khabar de raha. Now, whether the FIR registered on the information of the accused will be hit by section 25 of the Con uh, Evidence Act? Confession? And we all know confession is not an admissible evidence. Whereas, 154 FIR is an admissible evidence. So I'm giving you deliberately these complicated situations which we encounter in the courts. That in that case, where the accused himself is an informant, coming and confessing the crime before the police, and he's the first informant, so the, the information given by him becomes an FIR, whether the FIR will be hit by section 25 or not. Can you still produce that FIR before the court as an evidence? It is a confession. It is confession, so hit by 25? Yes. No. That is, that is, see, that is the thin line. Here the Supreme Court has held in such cases that the FIR will be bifurcated, it will be dissected. The information of a crime will be an admissible evidence. Only area where he is confessing that he did it will be out. The confession portion of the FIR will be disallowed as an evidence. Rest all will be an evidence. Now, if you remember, there are two exceptions to confession also. In what two cases even confession becomes an admissible evidence is section 27 and section 32 of the Indian Evidence Act. 27 is leading to the discovery. Suppose if a person says, I murdered such and such person. Now, this statement is confession, disallowed in the courts. But he says further that such and such is the spot where I have hid the, hidden the dead body. Such and such is the spot where I have hidden the weapon. The police, as per his confession, goes and traces the dead body as well as the weapons. Now, these two discoveries are admissible evidence under section 27. Except the admission that I did it is out. So that is confession. Hit by 25. 27 leading to discoveries, admissible evidence. 32, dying declaration. A person before death lodges an FIR. Suppose an information is received by the police that a burnt person has been brought to the hospital. And the police rushes to hospital and the lady before dying is giving the entire narration that how this happened. And that is the first FIR. But technically when the police got an information that somebody has been brought to hospital that becomes an FIR. <coughs> because police, how the police reach to the hospital? Police reach to the hospital after receiving some FIR, some information. So that becomes an FIR. So that becomes admissible. The lady's statement becomes inadmissible under 162. But because it's a dying declaration, the lady dies, then that dying declaration becomes admissible evidence. Please understand these minutes, these subtle technicalities. So even confessions are admissible under 27 and 32. Even 162 under 32 is admissible evidence. That secondary statement is also becomes. Admissible. 
Now, these are certain very minutes of Evidence Act. Or ek baat, section 6 or section 11 are very vital in a trial. Section 6 talks about res geste, doctrine of res geste. And section 11 talks about doctrine of alibi. Now, res geste is what? Res geste is a very unconnected fact from the fact in issue. Now, please understand what the rule says. Rule says that under the trial, either the fact in issue or the relevant fact will be admissible evidence. But res geste is an unconnected fact, irrelevant fact becomes relevant. How? I'll tell you. A person is accused of theft. Now what is the fact and issue is theft. As I had earlier also explained that he was walking and he was found with the money subsequently are relevant facts. But while having a conversation with his friend two days ago, he was saying that I am in dire need of money. Now, this conversation two days ago is totally unconnected. We have to say that 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 we have to say because that is bringing the motive issue into the crime. So, what was the motive of the crime? That he was in a dire need of money. He was talking with his friend two days ago. That is how res geste. And what is the doctrine of alibi under section 11 is? When a crime is being committed and a person says that I was never in the crime scene. I was so far away from the crime scene that it was impossible for me to be on the spot. That is what the doctrine of alibi. That you have crime in Bombay and you prove that I was in Delhi. Mein tha. That is doctrine of alibi. That if you could produce evidences of your presence in Delhi at the time when the crime was committed in Bombay, then that is doctrine of alibi under section 11. Now, these are certain subtle minutes which I have told about. Last point before I end is the art of cross-examination, which is very, very vital and important. Unfortunately, while cross-examining, we forget that what are we hunting for? बहुत सारे लोगों को क्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन में ये ही नहीं पता होता कि वो निकालना क्या चाहते हैं विटनेस से। आपने अक्सर ये सीक्वेंसेस देखे होंगे कि लॉयर्स आर फाइटिंग विद द विटनेस। दे एंटर इनटू अल्टरकेशन विद द विटनेस। दे समटाइम्स डिमांड द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ़ दिस डॉक्यूमेंट। दे आस्क क्या आप � Please don't do that. There are certain vital, important elements of a cross-examination, please remember. First of all, do not ask a question to the witness, the answer of which you already do not know. Cross-examination, koi किसी का एग्जाम टेस्ट पास करने जैसा नहीं है कि तुमको ये जानकारी है कि नहीं है आपको जो जानकारी है सिर्फ उसके मुंह से निकलवाना इस द आर्ट ऑफ क्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन सेकंड थिंग सेक्शन 141 142 ऑफ द इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट टॉक्स अबाउट लीडिंग क्वेश्चंस 
which are prohibited under examination in chief but leading questions are allowed during cross examination so a good cross examiner as a good cross examiner you must insist most of the questions should be leading question aapke questions aap aise frame kijiye jiska answer ha ya na ho so as a cross examination please utilize that section 141 142 which is given to you use it to the hilt keep asking leading questions the more leading questions you ask the more shrunk and narrow answer will be an opportunity to the witness he will have to give a very narrow answer because please understand the moment you gave an opportunity to the witness to explain explanation aapke case ko dubo dega witness ko explain karne ka mauka mil gaya to aap wo to sari situation explain kar dega so as a good cross examiner utilize leading questions third thing don't insist of production of a document by the witness see whatever he had to produce he has already produced whatever he failed to produce why do you want take advantage of it if he has not produced he is not produced that is wonderful for you why do you insist ye leke aaiye ye dikhaiye koi zarurat nahi aap ne agar usne produce kiya achhi baat nahi kiya achhi baat only thing is you should say that kya ye document आपके पास है उसने कहा हाँ आपका काम बन गया कि हाँ होते हुए भी आपने प्रोड्यूस क्यों नहीं किया उसने कहा ना तो भी आपका काम बन गया कि जब ये डॉक्यूमेंट ही नहीं है तो फिर आप पूरा केस ही कोलैप्स हो रहा है आपका वाई डू यू इंसिस्ट कि ब्रिंग दैट डॉक्यूमेंट वॉट विल यू गेन नेवर इंसिस्ट थर्ड थिंग नेवर एंटर इन टू ऑल्टरकेशन विटनेस के साथ आपको कोई झगड़ा करके कुछ हासिल नहीं होने वाला यू शुड बी वेरी काम कंपोज एंड क्लियर प्रिपेयर योर क्वेश्चन इन एडवांस विद द मोटिव वॉट डू यू वॉन्ट एंड दैट इज हाउ यू विल बी इन अ पोजिशन टू एक्सट्रैक्ट द इंफॉर्मेशन विच यू नीड दीज आर द सर्टन वाइटल फैक्ट्स विच आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर आउट ऑफ माई एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट Thank you very much for inviting me and giving me this opportunity.